Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our third um, reflection for uh, Lent uh, from this book, To Seek and to Save, by Sinclair B. Ferguson. The uh, title for our reflection uh, today is Three Men on the Road, and it's taken from Luke 9, verses 57 to 62, which um, I encourage you, if you'd like to, to read um afterwards um each of the days has a specific passage in luke's gospel um which i won't read out uh, every day but um if you feel like it uh, and you've got one to hand um or you can get it online look at the bible and uh, read the verses um just in case you haven't joined us for the previous two, and this will be the, the last time that I uh, explain the whole thing. Um, in essence, this is a shorter reflection than ones that we've had for, uh, let's, Advent last year, Lent the, uh, last year, and so on. They're slightly shorter in terms of what I read out, but they have within them a time for uh, reflection and response. Uh, so what I will do is after I've read this out, I will uh, play some music for us in the background, display the questions for reflection, uh, and we'll have a few minutes of uh, quiet uh, personal reflection, and then end with um, a prayer. I will join us together for a final prayer. So three men on the road, Luke 9, 57 to 62. My father coined an expression that he often used to make it clear to me that I was not thinking clearly. Your head is full of broken glass. This admittedly unusual expression makes an important point. Wrong thinking means something is broken inside your mind, and wrong thinking can have painful consequences. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to suffer and die, he encounters three men, apparently in quick succession. In each case, he questions whether they are thinking straight about it, what, what it means to be his disciple. The dominant term for a Christian in the Gospels and Acts. The first man offers to follow Jesus without being invited. His enthusiasm knows no bounds. He confidently asserts that he will follow Jesus wherever he lays his head. But what if there is no bed? asks Jesus. Three young men once arrived at a mission I was leading and announced, The Lord has told us to join you. I said that since the Lord had not given me advance warning, no sleeping arrangements had been made for them, and so they would have to sleep on the floor. They were nowhere to be found the next morning. It seems that they had not reckoned on the fact that those who follow Jesus may have no pillow on which to lay their heads. Unlike the first man who volunteers, the second man is called by Jesus to follow him. However, he wants to wait until after his father's funeral. Was it just about to take place? Judging by Jesus' response, the man's father was still alive. He was saying, yes, I will follow you, but later. The Lord gives a famous, somewhat enigmatic and possibly proverbial response. Leave the dead to bury their own dead. In essence, when it comes to following Jesus, nothing else, not even family ties, can be allowed to take priority. Nothing and nobody, period, must take priority over Jesus. The third man, like the first, also volunteers, but with a little more caution. Had he overheard the first two conversations? Wisdom dictates that he state a minor qualification up front. He would like to say his goodbyes at home, a modest request, surely, and perhaps a carefully thought-out one, since it echoes Elisha's words when Elijah called him for future service, 1 Kings 19, verses 19 to 21. Jesus responds in kind when he says that no one who puts his hand to the plough and then looks back 
is fit for the kingdom of God. His reference to a plough reminds this man of what Elisha actually did when he asked, let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. Exactly that. Elisha immediately kissed his past life goodbye. He took the 12 yoke of oxen with which he had been plowing, he must have come from a wealthy family, sacrificed them, cooked the meat on a fire kindled by burning the wood of the yokes, and held a becoming a trainee prophet party for his friends. It was the farming equivalent of burning his boat. Earlier in the Gospel, Luke had recorded Jesus' parable of the sower, 8 verses 4 to 8. The same seed, God's word, falls on three kinds of soil, which bear no lasting fruit. The seed sometimes falls on the hard pathway and is snatched away. It sometimes falls on shallow soil with a rocky substratum, where there is immediate joy but no repentance. And sometimes the seed falls on thorny ground where the cares and riches and pleasures of life choke it. These men were simply test cases for that parable. As far as we know, they turned out just as the parable suggested. Jesus does not call every disciple to leave home. Earlier in this gospel, he told a man who wanted to follow him to go home and serve him there. 8 verses 38 to 39. But what this passage teaches us is that Jesus wants, I am willing to give up everything, go anywhere, do anything for you, disciples. So the reflection questions. What reservations do you have about Christ's lordship over your life? What give you, gives you confidence that he is worth following? So we're going to reflect on those uh, now together. I will display them on the screen as promised and play some music for us as we reflect together.
Let us pray together. Dear Lord God, thank you that you are Lord and King. Lord, help us to know what it means for you to be our Lord and King. Lord, help us not to come up with excuses for not following you. Help us to put you first in our lives and to follow you faithfully where and when you call us. Lord, we know that life is not always easy, but we know that we can trust you. So help us to do that, we pray, through this Lent and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much for joining me uh, once again. We meet again tomorrow at half past nine. Uh, tomorrow's title, we meet the self-defense lawyer. The self-defense lawyer. And that's from Luke 10, verses 25 to 37. So see you tomorrow. God bless you all. Have a great day. Take care and bye for now.